So we're here at the Nate City of Edmonton Climate Ready Trailer. Uh, the City of Edmonton has a really great energy transition plan that aims to reduce emissions of the city through buildings, transportation and industry. And ultimately the emissions from buildings uh, make up about one third of the city's total emissions. And so the idea behind this trailer is to provide a really a real tangible example of what people can do in their own homes to reduce their energy consumption and ultimately their emissions. Changing for Climate. Stephanie Ripley says there are four steps to reducing emissions, saving energy, and making our homes climate ready. There are things like drain water, heat recovery, heat recovery, ventilation, there's solar on the roof, examples of different types of insulation you can put in a building, building envelope ceiling, whole bunch of different things. So let's go inside and take a look. A home energy evaluation is critical in helping you get started on a zero emissions pathway. From that energy audit, you're going to receive a sticker like this. So uh, possibly your starting point is out here at a typical house using 154 gigajoules. And maybe your end goal is down rate at the ultimate uh, net zero house. A net zero home is a, a home that uh, produces as much energy as it consumes over the course of a year. So your net energy consumption will be zero gigajoules a year. Stephanie now works with the Alberta Municipal Climate Change Action Centre, providing clean energy improvement financing to help people on their energy efficiency pathway. All right, so where you typically want to start on most existing homes is with the building envelope. And so that's the, your insulation and your air sealing on the outside of your home, uh, making sure that the inside stays as warm or as cool in the summer as possible. So. Uh, typically most homes are built with this is sort of a standard wall and this is either 2x4 or 2x6 construction with insulation on the inside and some air sealing there. Ideally, we would build, build better than this. And so this next one here is a double stud wall. This is about R40, so really good insulation value. You can upgrade the insulation of your existing home as well. So if we're looking at the renovation side of things and not a new build, this would get us to a similar thing as this double stud wall where you've got your original insulation on the inside and then you're actually adding insulation on the exterior. So this is a great opportunity for a retrofit to make that your, your walls a lot, have a much better insulation value. And then windows are another really good place to look. So double, double pane is sort of what's often was standard put in. Switching everything to triple pane helps really increase the efficiency on your windows. Uh, and making sure that you're not losing that heat in the winter time and it also helps keep your house cool more cool in the summer once you've done the really good tightening and insulating on the outside of your home you want to start looking at how to reduce the energy that ne you need to heat and cool your home and so a really good option for heating the, the majority of our energy that we use in alberta for, for in a home generally is for space heating so switching to something like an air source heat pump to heat uh, is a really good option. It uses electricity and it also is an incredibly efficient way to use that energy to heat the space, but it also doubles as a cooling system in the summer. So instead of getting a separate air conditioning unit uh, to deal with the, the more frequent you know, 40 degree days that we're seeing in the summer, this actually acts as a heater in the winter and an air conditioning unit in the summer. It just reverses its cycle. So really good option to, to swap out and reduce your energy consumption for space heating. And so adding something like a heat recovery ventilator instead of just a regular ventilation system um, allows you to recover a lot of the heat that would otherwise just be being dumped outside and wasted uh, to come back into your heating system and be reused in the house. So it still gets fresh air in, but recovers a lot of that heat that would otherwise be wasted. And then coming to your hot water heating is sort of the next big thing that uses energy in the home. And you know, for all of our showers and uh, washing the dishes and doing all the things we need to do with hot water, uh, heat, uh, drain water heat recovery, which is a, what's shown here, is a really, really cost effective way to try and save some of that energy that would otherwise be going down the drain. So your hot water from your showers, the, it, this actually recovers the heat from that and uses it to preheat the water in your water tank. So again, instead of just throwing all of that heat that you've already paid for down the drain, this helps you save some of it in your house. Uh, you can also do things like air source heat pump hot water tanks. And you know, there's lots of other different technologies to help you reduce the amount of energy that you need to actually heat that water in your home. So once you have your building envelope all set and you've reduced your energy consumption as much as you can, what you want to start looking at is producing renewable energy on site. So there are solar PV panels on top of the trailer. They're a great option. They're a really economical way to produce your own renewable electricity. So it's, it's really a win-win. 
This is part one on climate-ready homes, dealing with mitigation or actions you can take to reduce emissions and get your home on a pathway to zero emissions. In part two, we find out what you can do to adapt your home to withstand the flood, heat, wind, hail, and other impacts of climate change. Changing for Climate To learn more about the supports available to help kickstart your home retrofit journey, visit homes.changeforclimate.ca.